Well, except that I made a mistake, haven't I? Because that's currently going between um, 1 and... Uh, 0 and 7 rather than between 1 and 7, so I'm just going to... Um, what would I want to do with that then? This is a bit clumsy, but it doesn't really matter. If you can work this out, you'll be uh, you'll be doing well. Uh, I'm sure there are better ways of doing some of the maths in here that I'm doing, but as long as it works, I don't care. Whoops. Wrong one. Okay. So what I've done there is to um, to okay. So cycle now goes. Uh, cycle comes out minus one to one. Add one means it goes from zero to two. That's its range. Times three means it goes from zero to six. And then plus one means it goes from one to seven. So try that. There you go, that's better. <clears throat> so this is this is all uh, very straightforward maths. Um, the kind of temptation is to look at it and think, oh my god, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but uh, if I can do it, anybody can. So we can obviously increase the speed of that. Um, so we have a, a means of modulation. Just as an addendum, uh, remember that any of these things could be applied to any of these uh, inputs. So you can modulate anything with anything. Um, so in the same way as you could ap apply similar kind, of, you know, this this sort of um, oscillator to uh, the center frequency, to so that we have this you know changing relationship between the uh, the oscillator frequency and the mod in the uh, the uh, center frequency of the filter, we could also have something controlling the Q, um, and uh, and again that could be either some I'm not quite sure whether it would work particularly well being. Uh, having a relationship with the frequency, but uh, you might, or you, you might want to have it working independently. Um, so you could either use a cycle object, or you could use um, a line object with a f um, with a function again. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. So we could do a function and a line object. And what you can do? Whoops, sorry. Into there and into there. So once again, I'm bypassing these these uh, um, float objects, which are now completely redundant. So I'm going to get rid of them, um, and I will trigger it yet again using a button object, and I will change the range so that it goes from uh, let's say uh, I don't know ten to one hundred. And we'll make it happen over... I'll leave it at one second, that'll be fine. So now you will hear the, the Q changing at the same time as the... It's not as obvious as it might be, um, and maybe that's because this cycle is is uh, making a difference. There, so let's change that down to one hertz again. And perhaps even change this down to one. That should make it fairly obvious.
So maybe we don't want it to be too... Whoops, let's clear that. You get the idea, um, you know. Obviously, you you at that point it becomes interesting a question of finessing um, what values you put in in order to get most interesting results. Um, so anyway, I've had a bit of a fiddle, um, and hopefully most of that makes sense to you.